Okay, thank you, Jay. And uh, this is Randy Brooks. I am the host and moderator for our first presenter. And it is my pleasure to introduce Kyla Ramesh as our very first presenter today. And her talk is on Kire and Kire Suzuki, Cut and Cut Continuation. Thank uh, you. Kala, thank you. And Kyla Ramesh is a Pushcart nominated poet and editor, anthologist, and a faculty member of Symbiosis International University at Pune, where she's been teaching a 60-hour haikai course since 2012, first in India. She is the founding editor and director of Travini, a well, as well as conceptualizer of Travini Gurkulam Mentorship Program 2021. Editor-in-chief of the award-winning Nayad Anad, I'm not pronouncing saying that right, an anthology of contemporary world haiku, and is also author of Haiku and Beyond the Horizon Haiku, Beyond, a book of haiku and haibu, which is declared finalist in the Rabin Ranath Tagore Literary Prize 2019. Kala also teaches a three-month course on Japanese aesthetics as seen through haikai lens. So Kala organized a seven haiku conferences in India since 2006 to bring haiku to everyday spaces. She has also initiated several projects. She created the Rasika Perform, an eight verse Renku fashioned after Matsubasho's non-thematic style. A speaker, oops, sorry. A speaker at international haiku conferences, she received the W.E. We Trio Razor Poet Award 2020 from Women Empowered India. So now without further ado, Kala Ramesh. Thanks a lot, Randy, and thanks, Jay, and thanks to HSC for inviting me over. And seeing 219 poets here, I'm having butterflies in my stomach. Okay, so at the beginning. In, in one note, um, Carla will have, will be sharing her, her files from her computer and you should be set to do the share screen, Carla. Yes, and yes, I, I, I think I know it, yeah. Answers and, answers and yeah. questions um, in response to some of her, her presentation, there will be some answer sections within it. Please send those directly to me, Randy Brooks, through the chat and I'll, I'll try to help convey those. So, okay, Carla, go ahead. Thank you, thank you all for being here. Um, I start off with my topic. There is no need to overemphasize Kire and its importance when writing haiku. It is everything. I came into haiku in 2005. Ever since that time, Kire, the cut in haiku has fascinated, intrigued, and had me in its clutches. I've been a student of Indian classical music ever since I was six years old, and I know what it is to give those silences, gaps in music, how to cut the voice and wait before uttering the next note. In Indian philosophy, we talk of neti, neti, not this, not this, until every layer is peeled off like an onion before we come to the core, which is one pulsating consciousness, the concept of non-dualism. From that concept of cutting, I came into haiku and the kire here was something slightly different. In 2005, I knew no, no groups, no social media, and the haiku books from Amazon were beyond my reach. It was a lonely struggle trying to understand these concepts. Still waiting to know what exactly this kire is about, I looked at other art forms. The famed Film and Television Institute of India, which is in Pune, where I live, runs a one month intensive course in July every year called the Film Appreciation. In 2012, I registered for it, and all that I wanted to study was how the most renowned directors and film editors in the world edited, made cuts in their films, and to tell their story. The experience 
and the learning was huge. Of course, I don't know whether it helped me in my haiku writing, but it did help me in appreciating the way films were made. Again, in my search to find out what a kire is all about, I found this precious video in Richard Gilbert's site, Haiku Research. Yuda Kiyoko has spoken on kire. It was not on kire, it was more on women's issues, but I thought bringing that in as an introduction to my, to show the importance of kire would not be out of, going out of the topic. So I'm just quoting her, women poets were few. It was generally thought that the literary form of haiku itself was unsuitable for women. I'm referring here to cutting. Haiku cuts, as you know. It cuts, kiru, for example, to cut is the technique of cutting. She goes on to say how, relatively speaking, women have been pliant and have been poor at cutting for women have always enjoyed talking and discussing their day-to-day -day lives in great detail. Haiku is a literary form based on truncation, isn't it? Uda Kiyoki, Kiyoko asks. Haiku cuts scenes, actions, everything, and cuts time, words, and language. Haiku has many things. It has seasons, it's seven, five, seven, five format, and much more. But the essence of haiku is the cut. As such, especially for women, this technique of cutting was perhaps ill-suited to their expression. Socially also, it was difficult for a woman to go out. Women have always been okusama. Oku plus sama means wife. Oku means hidden in the back behind. So women have been in the back behind. Women did not go out in the public. At that time, women rarely got a chance to announce their full name. Yes, yes, she says smilingly. We identify a woman as so-and-so's mother or Mr. X's Okusama. We rarely asked a woman what her actual name was. So after living for 50 years as neighbors, we still don't know. We didn't know their names, she says. Women are now liberated and they have the freedom. They announce their names and the position of women has greatly improved in present times. 60, 70 years back, India was in a similar state. And that is why I could relate to what she said. I asked my mother just a week back if that was so, if, if ever her grandmother ever had an opportunity to say her name. I asked a few friends, it was the same, but that is not here, that, but that is not what I'm here for. It is to talk about what this cut in haiku is all about. I'll be talking about the cut, Kire, and cut continuity, Kire Suzuki. Let's take the cut first. The cut, known as the Kire, is the most important technique and aesthetic tool we use when writing a haiku. What does it do? It creates that space between the images. In a minimalistic poem, how can one tell a story? Where is the place for narration? The cut, known as the kire, does this magic for us. It helps the author to link from one image to the next by creating a cut, which in turn creates a space. The kire forms the backbone and can be called the soul in haiku. The kire sometimes can happen more than once in a haiku, but happening once is a must, bringing into focus the images that run parallel and the space between them. Let me go back to an incident which happened some 30 years back. I had a motorbike, a scooty, 
and I was going to drop my two children in school and the bike wouldn't start. So I pushed it to the mechanic, being already late and I hate to be late for anything. And uh, I've been kicking and uh, kickstarting my bike for the last 20 minutes and it just wouldn't start and he just put it in place in two minutes. So I said, what is this magic? And he said, your spark plug was jammed. I asked him to explain. And he said, it shouldn't be too wide or it shouldn't be jammed. It should just have the correct space for the bike to start. It stayed in my mind. After coming to Haiku, somewhere I read about this spark plug. And I thought that was a beautiful analogy because I'd experienced it. And it seemed to explain everything about how a haiku works. We now go, I would like to tell you how I teach. I start off, I mean, I, on the second day is when I start off with kire because that seems to be the most trickiest thing to understand. But this is what I generally do. If you look at Basho's haiku, famous haiku, we see that he has clearly linked the two images. The crow alights on a bare branch against the backdrop, background of an autumn nightfall. Both the connection between the two images and the distance between them should be right, like in a spark plug. Otherwise, the poem doesn't come together as a haiku. It falls flat. So let's take this poem. On a, on a bare branch, a crew is alighted. Autumn nightfall. It seems to be just right. The connection between the two or more images happens only when the images are close, but not too close, not too far apart. Now I go on to tell them with an image which is very close. I say, on a bare branch, a crow is alighted, the leafless tree. Now you'd understand that the leafless tree is already told in the, on a bare branch. It's all about the tree and the bird. There is, a, there is no dissimilar, another image which is dissimilar to the first one. And so the haiku doesn't happen. The spark doesn't happen. Or maybe like Anita Virgil will say, it's so what haiku. The first image, let me read again. On the bare branch, a crow is alighted, the leafless tree. The first image, a crow alighting on a bare branch is too close to the second image of a leafless tree. Hence, there is no twist or surprise and the haiku falls flat. Now let's me change the third line again for the next example. On a bare branch, a crow is alighted, science project. On a bare branch, a crow is alighted, science project. The two images, a crow alighting on a bare branch and a science project have no connection. So the haiku does not work. For a haiku to connect, we need the images neither too close as in example one, nor too far and disconnected as in example two. And I thought this would be very clear for people who want to write good haiku, but it wasn't so. When I started to teach the undergrads at the Symbiosis School for Liberal Arts in 2012, I felt this explanation wasn't enough. They were not really getting the hang of it. It was too brief. It just went away like the autumn wind. So I was just wondering how else to do it. And I thought maybe I would make it even more simpler, even more to their level, to all our levels. And maybe that would click. So then what I told them, of course, I, I didn't want to tell it in such a uh, huge audience where you people know haiku very well, but this is what I told my students and I'm sharing it with you. I told about the birthday plate. 
you're going to a birthday party and the host has kept three types of plates for you to choose. The first is all a cake cut into several pieces. This, and that is not what you want. You don't want to be eating cake, cake, cake the whole time. The second plate was a piece of cake and a piece of mud. Again, that is not what you want. So you leave that. And the third plate had maybe a samosa, the cake piece, some chocolates, maybe a lime sherbet. And you say, yay, this is what I want. And you take it. The concept, we, again, if you go back, the concept of the first, the poem, was exact like a birthday plate, which we all, or rather the children look forward to. And the second, where it is jammed and it not working. So it is, it is in the tree, the withered branch, it's not, it's too, too close together, it doesn't work. It is, it is like uh, just cake being offered. It's just cake, cake, cake the whole time. The second example is piece of mud and cake, which is the spark plug is too wide. It does not click. And the third is what clicks when the poem has two dissimilar images coming together and thus there is the kire happening. And when the kire happens, the ma happens, the space comes in and, and the two images tell a story which you can maybe say, this is the haiku I want to write. Of course, this is when we start off and now Richard Gilbert talks about disjunction, which is definitely related to the cut, but I'm not going into that now. It needs more study and more time, or maybe it needs Richard himself to explain this concept. I hope you've understood what Kire is, not for the people who are already writing well, because I have so much to learn from you all. It's just for the beginners or to understand how to teach Kire to newcomers. It's very difficult to, to teach, and I've been struggling with that. Now we come to the next portion of my talk, which is Kire Suzuki, cut continuation. I would like you to hear an Indian bamboo flute recording played by India's top classical musician, Pandit Rakesh Chaurasia. I would like you to sink into the raga music, but be very aware of the cut in the musician's breath and the continuation of the breath and the flow of the music facilitated by his fingers caressing the notes. I would like to share now, just give me a second. I hope you like this music. Did you all enjoy it? Yes. Yes, thanks Randy. Um, yes, Carol. It was mainly, it was called the Raga, where we, where we expand the Raga, note by note. It is, it is not notated, it is improvisation on the spot. And that is why people nod their heads because it is not something that we expect the musician to bring, but everything is done with that control of that breath. Everything is done with understanding when the notes should be played and when it should not be played. And when the breath should be continued and when the note should go up and come down in one breath. If you had noticed all this, this is what I want to talk about now. So we go on. We go on to the next topic. 
for the next half the topic, which is I think Kiri and Kiri Suzuki is so tied together because one cannot happen without the other, which you'll come to know as I explain further. When I was reading about no theater, no drama, I came across the term Kiri Suzuki or cut continuity. The commonest, commonest example of this is the pause between every inhalation of air, air from the lungs and the next inhalation. There is both a cut and a continuation. The interchanging oxygen and the carbon dioxide in the Kirei Suzuki happening in our body is, I mean, is Kirei Suzuki that is happening in our body every second. When one moment stops, when the inhalation stops or the exhalation stops, we say we are dead. It is that continuity that keeps the life flowing. Till COVID struck, we never realized we were given this precious commodity for free. The notion of cut continuation is exemplified in a highly stylized gait of the actors in the no drama, which is the second step and which I just love. And every time I see it, I say, yes, the actor slides the foot along the floor with the toes raised and then cuts off the movement by quickly lowering the toes to the floor and the beginning at, and beginning at that precise moment, the sliding movement along the floor with the foot happens in the second feet. So one goes up and then immediately the second one goes up and cuts the third one, I mean, or rather the left goes up and cuts and the right goes up and cuts. And this moment, it seems in no theater is done so well. You know, you're wearing long gowns. Can you just imagine you don't see the legs and then all you see is the seamless movement of dancers on the stage. It must be so impressive. And I think it's been done by a few Indian dancers, classical dancers. Maybe they've taken the idea from no, because we don't have this continuous movement. But just imagine, just. I, I searched the Google, I searched all over for some place where I could have a, a YouTube uh, where this moment was shown, but it was not there. So I, but you can just, I leave it to your imagination. This stylization of the natural human walk draws attention to the episodic nature of life. Now, let me see the number of poets who are here, I think quite a lot. 232. Woo, 232, and I managed to talk something before all of you without feeling, just without breaking down. Yes. Now, out of this, how many of you have tried to take part in a Renku? Renku is a collaborative linked verses that Basho revived. It is a 400 year old art form it is non-thematic form and it is known for its variety and imaginative play of emotions. If you know even a little bit about Renko, you would know how close it is to Kirei Suzuki. Except for the Hoku, which is a standalone poem, all others lean on the previous verse and the finished poem paints a beautiful canvas of verses coming from different sources and experiences and still shows a continuity of life. It is written by four or five poets. It can even be written by two poets, it can be written by 10 poets. And we have various ways of writing a short one, which is called a Junichu. I've just concluded a three month course on Japanese aesthetics. And we winded up the course with a, with a Junichu, a 12 verse Renko. I think some of the members are here. The whole group felt they learned a lot about the whole way the Japanese thought, the thinking from participating in this exercise. I would now go on. I would like to share and we go on to the last part of the uh, talk here where 
I will be sharing uh, Basho's poem. And uh, Randy, do we have time? How much yes. more? Yes, we do. Go ahead and do the sharing with the. Uh, yes, yourself. I'll share, and I want you all. It possible? Put it on the chat. Put your answers on the chat. Um, you need it. There it comes. Yes. In the twilight of dawn, a white fish with an inch of whiteness. Matsuo Basho, translated by Makoto Yuda. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing the Japanese names properly, but that's it. Now, uh, would you all like to tell me, we are, we are not looking at other things, we are looking at the cut continuity, the cut continuation, the Kirei Suzuki. Is there Kirei Suzuki? Do you think it is there in this poem written 400 years back? What is your opinion? You can put it in the chat if you want, or maybe um, um, Randy, they can sort of unmute and uh, tell their answer. It's probably too many to unmute, but put it in the chat and I'll share some. Terry okay. French says, yes, after Whitefish. Okay, oh, yes, Terry French. Hi, Terry. I could, yes, anyone else? Margar says yes after the white fish. After the white fish, no. What I'm talking about is after the white fish, yes. But also You're after dawn is uh, somebody saying. Yes, yes. In the twilight of dawn. So let me just uh, uh, explain where I'm coming from. In the twilight of dawn, I'm seeing this from my Pune house, and I share the university hill. So I see the dawn, and I see the quarter of the sky, a little bit of the sky above the hill, and I'm looking at it. And I come to the second line, oh, white fish. I immediately turn completely 90 degrees, and I go back to my youth. I was born and brought up in Chennai, and my father used to take us to the beach every Thursday. I see a white fish. I have searched the Google for what the white fish is. I don't think in India we have it. We have not seen it. It doesn't matter. I see a white fish. Yes, so and there is continuity. And there's also yeah. some continuing after inch. Yes, with an inch. What do I do? From a huge thinking in my mind is a huge fish and that is why in the twilight of dawn, the contrast of a fish is seen. I see an inch with an inch of whiteness. There comes the moment, there comes this Kirei Suzuki. Now is the fish jumping into the water and I see a little bit of the fin or the tail, which is just one inch of whiteness, or is the fish coming out and I see the tip of its nose or it's near the portion of the eye, which is one inch of whiteness. Marcy Wessels asked, are there three cuts after dawn? Yes, it is like that. But in the twilight of dawn, a white fish, we can even read it that way. It is like the midline, mid, uh, midline caesura. In the twilight of dawn, a white fish with an inch of whiteness. So if you see, we don't know what the fish is going to do. Has it gone right in? Is it going to come out again? Or has it come out and is it going to take a dip again? He leaves it unfinished. Scott but, Mason says, maybe there's a big cut and a small cut. Yes, there is. There is a big cut and a small cut. But what matters is like the musician who's playing the flute. He gives you a huge space and a thing, and he has a little bit of notes. In fact, I wish I could have kept some more where he goes into shut, shut, shut notes, which is beautiful. But then I didn't want to take too much time uh, because it was just an example that I wanted to give you all. So what, one last uh, comment that after dawn in the Japanese has ya, has the cutting word. That is the word that cuts and we don't have it. So we put, yeah. Now exactly dawn and then after whitefish, yes, someone has said, irony, yes, I agree, I don't understand that. It's like the modulation, yes, it's like the modulation in music, it is, nice it job. is, all these things show the continuity. Ah, that shows the continuity, in one breath I'm doing it and then I take a breath and then ah, I do that again. 
And that is what music is. That is what the painting strokes are about. It is a continuity. And if that comes into your poem, it's going to be beautiful, as beautiful as what Basho has written. So now I'm going to stop this sharing. I hope you all agreed it was worth listening to this. Yes. Did you all get anything from this? Yes, Randy? Yes. Was it OK? Yeah, we're seeing now, lots of yes. And, uh, we have some time for a short quiz, or we end here. Jay? OK. A short quiz is nothing. It is just, it's just for fun. It's just five questions. Should we go for it or no? Because I didn't check the time. I think you have time. Go for it, Kala. OK, thanks. Thank you. And I want you all to write um, uh, in the in your chat, please. Kire is the most the most important technique when writing haiku. No, yes, not sure. Yes, you can send it in the chat. Lots of yeses coming in. Yes, oh shlokas here. Oh, okay. I don't see any no's, Kali. You brought them all over. So many Indians here. Oh, I see so many Indians here. Yes, so nobody's got the answer wrong. Fine. So I think you people know what haiku is better than me. So we go to the next question. In, in, in an English language haiku, what is kireji? A punctuation to show the reader where the kire is. Kireji is a Japanese vegetable. I've never heard of it. A, 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 A. Yes, 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 yes. Very good. Yes, it is a punctuation. And, and of course, we all go through uh, spaces when we, are, we go through without punctuation. And then there's a space when we put punctuation every time. It doesn't mean the punctuation is just to show where kire is. If your kire is strong, it doesn't need a punctuation. So, and if, if a punctuation is put when the kiri is not there, it's cosmetic. I always say it's like putting lipstick when you've not been eating a good diet. Yes. So we go to the next, the third question. What was that wind instrument? I don't want the Indians to answer. What was that wind instrument you heard a while back? Was it the tabla? What is the Indian bamboo flute? Was it the mouth organ? Coming in B. B, 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 Yes, everyone, B. Very good. Yes, yes, very good. I know I told you it is just for fun. And, but I'm happy that you got all, all of you got the answer correct. Kire Suzuki is a bike in Japan. Cut continuation, a type of a film. I think you're getting more Bs here on this one. Okay, okay, done. Yes, B, 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 B. Yes, yes, good. Excellent. And we come to the last question and the last part of my talk also today. The most important example of Kire Suzuki in no drama is their breathing, a stylized movement of their legs, their facial expression. I think the bees have it again. Buzzing. Yes, you got it. You got it. Lovely, lovely. Oh. Well, very nice. Um, we are really almost at the end of the, of the talk. Um, if you do have a question or two, um, you can submit them to me. Um, but I think that this time it's almost time to close it. But also want to let you know that we will get the uh, examples from, from Kala and we'll have them posted along with some of her talk for you later, yes. including a link to that, that wonderful music that we heard earlier. Yes, I hope you liked it. And Jay, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And Randy, you've been so good with me. I was so jittery when they said, you're my moderator and you're my host. I said, oh God, what is this? What am I getting into? But thank you so much. Thank it was you. wonderful, Kala. And thank you so much for sharing sharing your, your look into Kiriji and the continuation too. It's wonderful. Um, thank you. Nice for all of us to sort of consider again the, the way there's this, the continuation of the end of a haiku, before the next haiku, and uh, within haiku, so that's, that's wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. All right. thank, you. thank you so much, thank well, you. Very good, well yes. thank you, and, and a big round of applause to to Kala, and um, so. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.
I see so many people I know. Oh, thanks, Mike. Mike is here. Mike Reeling. Thank you, Mike. So we are we're at 230 participants at this moment, and our next presentation will be starting shortly. And uh, with uh, Michael Dylan Welch presenting and moderator Himan Shubias. So, so uh, just be they'll be ready here just in a moment. Kala, can I can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, when, I don't know whether we have time, Randy. Um. Go ahead. We have one question. Here we go. When you yeah. were when you were reading about no theater. Did you read about the concept of Kokoro and, and does, does that apply to um, what you talked about today? Uh, no, Kokoro, that is Uda. I, that was only for, about the women and their uh, not coming and not getting that uh, cut properly and that the women never wrote haiku those days. Only the first part was Uda's. Okay. The second part, about the no theater was when I went searching for Kire and I happened to see this and they said they use uh, cut continuation, Kire Suzuki so well in no theater because of that moment of that cut and then the second feet coming and the third feet going. And uh, they said that is, and the breath control. I mean, the breath going in and coming out is actually one breath which goes in, gets cut and then it's another breath coming out. The inhalation is another type of gas coming out. Isn't it? So mm -hmm. it is cut continuation and still okay. life continues. So that is a different part altogether. It is not from Uda. Okay. okay. I hope I've answered your question. Yes. yes. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Hannah. All right. At this time, I'm going to turn it over then to Michael Dylan Welsh. Is Michael here? There he is. I am here, but uh, it's still 11 minutes till the top of the hour. Okay. So I would not start yet. Okay, we still have some time for questions or other comments then. Oh, I finished early? We're in the gap between presentations. Okay, okay, fine, fine. And Carla, um, it, uh, it was requested that Kent, you could post the um, link to that the music you shared um, I can. I in can our, uh, in our yes. uh, yeah in the chat that'd be wonderful yes i'll do that uh, uh, i don't know whether uh, because let me see it's, we can get it later and add it, add it later if we need yeah, to. I will, I will send it later because I don't know, uh, uh, because I don't, uh, let me see. I think I have it with me. Just wait, I have it with me. Yes, send it. Thank you. It's a beautiful music. It's a beautiful one. If you can listen to the whole thing, you love it. And the tabla, the percussion is by, uh, by Zakir Hussain, who's just marvelous with this tabla and with the sense of rhythm. Is it possible to play that music on this break right now? Yes. Could you play it again? Of course. 
I would love that. I would too. <laughs> can I, Randy? Can I play the music again? Yep. We got. We still have a few more minutes. That'd be great. <laughs> 